Hi everybody, uh, Debbie from White River Design and Brand Magic Masterclass and in this session today in episode four, we're going to be delving even deeper into the whole topic of brand personalities. So last week I spoke about brand personalities, why you would actually use them, what they actually mean, um, what makes you different to your competitors, that type of thing. So it really was looking at the overall picture about brand personalities and why you would actually use them. So in today's session, I thought we would go straight into the actual personalities themselves. So we can have a little look at um, what the personalities are. There are 12 of them, so bear with me as we go through all of them because it will take a little while. I'm actually in my office at the moment, so my poor team have to put up with me talking about this topic yet again. Um, but we will go through all the different uh, personality types, the attributes that um, are associated with them, and we're also going to have a little look at examples of um, which personalities, uh, which brands do have personalities. Now, there are a number of, of businesses that, um, you know, have not actually used a personality to help define their brand. And they're sometimes the ones that seem a little bit wishy-washy. They don't actually um, have a personality. So sometimes I get people asking me, oh, but what is the personality of this brand or that brand? Um, sometimes there's no answer to that because they actually haven't got one. Um, so what this means is if you're able to build a brand with personality, you're pretty much one step ahead of your competitors and you are being a lot more progressive in the game of business and branding. Um, it also gives you so much clarity as to how to speak to your clients and um, you know what you are going to say and how you're going to say it, what kind of images you're going to use, um, all that type of thing. So let's get into it. I am going to start with the caregiver. So your caregiver is your, um, they're very successful at providing consistent high quality service or care, um, creating stable and nurturing environments and advocating for others at a very high level. So words that we would use when we're describing or um, using the caregiver as a brand it are words like uh, nurturing, um, supportive, caregiving, um, connected, uh, empathetic, generous, um, selfless, and altruistic. And those would be, when you're talking about your language and tone, everything would be very gentle and soft. Uh, your language would be slowed down. Your tone would be of a gentle tone, not too energetic. Um, brands that have the caregiver brand personality would be brands like Campbell's Soup, uh, Pampers, Johnson & Johnson, and my one of my favorite brands at the moment is Thank You. So um, if you don't know the Thank You brand, I highly recommend that you look into it. Um, basically, they started off um, doing bottled water, and the owners when they started up Thank You, they had been traveling through Cambodia and they were volunteering in some of the very uh, poor rural areas. And they found out that, um, you know, there were people that were traveling two, three kilometers to go and get water every day, um, you know, and that they'd only be able to bring back, back to the village as much as they could literally carry. Um, so they decided, well, what if we were to start a company that gave 100% of the profits um, to building these uh, water systems um, that would actually bring water to these rural companies, uh, to, to these rural um, villages. And so they went up against the big, um, you know, Evians and Mount Franklins of the world and went, well, look, as a consumer, you have a choice. You can buy a product for exactly the same price where the profits go into the pockets of a CEO or you can buy the product and the profits go directly to helping a third world community. And they've been able to grow their brand to, uh, to now cover off on um, hygiene and nutrition as well. So there are a whole bunch of products that you can get that are thank you products. But everything that they do comes from that very supportive, caring, nurturing, altruistic way. So it's a fantastic brand. Check it out. All right, so the next one that I want to look at is the creator. Now, a lot of people think 
that because White River Design, we're a branding studio, we must be the creator. Well, that's actually not the case because that's what we do. It's not who we are. So that's something to keep in mind the whole time when you're looking at um, finding out what the personality of your brand is. So I'm not going to tell you what we are yet. We will come to our brand personality a little bit later. But as the creator, you know, it's about being a builder, about being imaginative, turning ideas into reality, being a bit of a dreamer, willing to take a few risks. Um, they're, they are very ambitious in trying to turn ideas into reality, very much, um, you know, an inventor. Um, and so your perfect um, creator brand personalities would be, um, well, Apple is partly um, the, the uh, creator. There's another half to Apple, which I will get to, but that's the innovative, forward-thinking, progressive side. Um, another brand personality, another brand under the creator would be Crayola. And then my favorite example is Lego, um, because Lego literally are little plastic blocks. And... Um, but they're not. You give a child Lego and suddenly their imagination can spark those little blocks into a castle or a fortress or a car or a spaceship or something. So you can see how um, Lego just harnesses all the attributes of the creator. Now, the language of the creator can be a lot more um, dreamy, a lot more inspiring, a lot more um, uh, colorful and has a lot more energy to it than you would say have for um, the caregiver. All right. So moving along. Is this making sense? I hope it, I hope it is. Uh, great to see you here, Elizabeth. Um, haven't seen you for a little while and it's good to see you on board from South Africa. Awesome. All right. So Next one is, I'm going to talk about the entertainer. So the entertainer um, excels at, um, you know, finding clever ways around obstacles. They're fun. They're lighthearted. They don't take themselves that seriously. Um, maybe they're a little bit chaotic. They're super spontaneous. They live in the moment. They're playful. They're an absolute joy to be around. And so when we look at that whole um, difference between what you do and who you are and how that makes a difference, this is a perfect example because I'm going to take Oprah and Ellen as the two examples. Um, Oprah is very different to Ellen. Ellen um, is very fun, she dances on stage, she can turn very serious topics into quite light-hearted conversations. And so she would be what we call the entertainer. Um, so they're both talk show hosts, but Oprah, on the other hand, she's very philosophical. She comes from a space of being a bit of a mentor and guiding you through things and an expert and an advisor and stuff. So she is what we would call the sage. And you can see that there's a big difference between what you do and then um, how you do it, which is it goes back to who you are as, as your brand personality. So that I thought was a good example of the two. So other examples of um, the entertainer brand personality would be Boost Juice, Boost, you know, you can even shout the name, um, Ben and Jerry's. Another good example would be M&M's. And when you think of M&M's, um, one of the, the main characters that comes to mind is Big Red. And, you know, he's quirky, he's fun, he hates the fact that people are going to eat him, uh, he's got a little bit of attitude. When you watch any, any of the adverts, um, you know, him and uh, his nutty friends are always trying to avoid being purchased and eaten. So they do it in a very lighthearted way. But in the end, it's still chocolate. And um, they've been able to harness the personality of the entertainer. All right, I'm just going to take a little slip of my tea. All right. Oh, hi, Nicola. Good to see you. Are you back in Australia? Hopefully. All safe and sound with your family. Um, all right, so the next one that we want to look at is the everyman. So the everyman is down to earth, unpretentious, uh, straight shooter, very practical, dependable, maybe a little bit of a traditionalist in, in some ways. Um, but, you know, this is your uh, girl or boy next door, your friendly neighbor, 
the really good citizen. So that's where your every man would sit. Um, not a lot of pretension going on there. The language that they would use would be very much layman's terms, down to earth. They wouldn't use any jargon. Um, their, their, converse, their, their tone and their language would be very conversational when you're working with the everyman. So um, when we're looking at examples of um, the everyman personality, we would look at uh, businesses like um, Wrangler, like Gap, and Ikea. I mean, Ikea, they bring you these beautifully designed products but very practical, dependable. They are uh, priced at a very reasonable rate. Yes, of course, you need to put them together. That, I guess, is the practical part of the whole scenario. But they, they're really making it accessible for everyone to be able to, to achieve. So um, that's where the uh, every man comes in. All right, the explorer. Now the explorer is the adventurer. They are the ones that are a little bit restless. They're a wanderer. They are um, always looking for something new and exciting. Um, they are very independent, very self-sufficient. Um, they, they do desire excitement and freedom. And they're a bit of a pioneer. So they are happy to travel that path that's less traveled. Um, they would, their language and tone would always be one of it of excitement and adventure and they would always be um, throwing in this this uh, desire for freedom so their language and tone would be have a lot more energy to it than you would say uh, the caregiver for example um, examples of um, the adventurer or the explorer is um, Kuntiki um, I also think that uh, Land Rover, but one of the best examples um, is Jeep, um, you know, because they've gone with that whole campaign of I bought a Jeep. And once you've bought a Jeep, well, your grass is growing to um, knee high because you're not there having to mow the lawns on the weekends, you're off exploring the world. Another great um, explorer brand personality is GoPro so they um, they actually hunt they're very clever with the way that they do their their marketing because they actually use people's footage from their GoPros to incorporate that into their marketing collateral so they don't actually even have to come up with their own footage they get supplied it from the people that use their product which is uh, which is a very exciting very interesting way of engaging back to their community that loves to use their product. All right, so the next one is the hero. So the hero is all about being a winner, being principled, um, you know, uh, improving the world, being proud and brave and courageous and achieving those goals and, and cheering their, their clients on to be better and do better and um, be able to uh, achieve what they've set out to achieve. So once again, the language and tones would be very energized. These would be very motivational. Um, think of your Tony Robbins of the world where, you know, constantly uh, motivating people to do better, be better. Um, other examples would be um, FedEx uh, come rain, hail or shine. They're going to get their parcels, their packages to you. And probably the best example that I can give you of a hero brand personality is Nike. Um, you know, even just their slogan, just do it. It doesn't matter how old, how young, how big, how small, how athletic, how unathletic you are, just do it. Do something and they are encouraging you no matter what you're doing, whether you're an absolute athlete um, or you are just, you know, the kid uh, running around the playing field, at least do something or even the potato couch, just get off the couch and do something. Um, all right, so the next one that I wanna look at is the innocent. Now, the innocent is uh, wholesome and pure, forgiving, they're honest, they're trusting, they're optimistic, they see the good in everyone and everything. And while other people think that the glass is half empty, 
you know, the innocent always thinks that the glass is half full. And, you know, um, when it's rainy days, they look at the fact that, well, you know, our grass is at least going to grow. And when it's hot days, they, they you know, um, they look at the fact that at least we have beautiful sunshine. So um, the innocent, there's always optimism there. They enjoy those simple pleasures in life. Um, they don't have to be uh, lavished in, um, you know, anything over the top. They're quite happy with all those simple joys in life. So um, when we're looking at the innocent um, brand personalities, the ones that pop up in my mind as some of the better ones would be um, Coca-Cola. When you think of all their marketing, it's all about happiness, about connectedness with your friends. Um, you know, whenever you see people having a Coca-Cola together, they are always having good times. It's just those simple things in life, you know, whether you're sharing a pizza with a friend. Um, the other one would be McDonald's. Um, and um, another great, um, uh, innocent brand personality is, um, yeah, sorry, McDonald's and also um, uh, Walt Disney. So Disney is one of the ones that fits into the innocent. They also fit in with another brand personality, which I will come with as well. So um, that is the innocent. The next one is the magician. So I mentioned before that White River Design is not the creator. White River Design is in fact the magician. So the magician is all about being a catalyst for change, being transformative, um, you know, being inspiring and visionary and charismatic and empowering. And that's what we do with a lot of our clients. You know, we look to the bigger picture. We're always coming up with new things that might be able to get them thinking differently. So um, a lot of the time when people come in to see us, you know, they, they're not too sure where their brand is, what's happening with their business. They come in, they, they look a little bit confused and, you know, where they're going with their business. And by the time we finished working with them, they are proud, they're empowered, they're out there, they're saying, look at my business, this is my brand, head to my website, I know exactly how to talk about everything that I need to do. So you can see the difference between us saying, well, we're creative and this is what we can do for you, um, whereas, that every, that's what every design studio will do. Whereas we say to people, well, we are your catalyst for change. We're inspiring and visionary and empowering for you. And it just means that we have a completely different language set that we can then use for our clients. So um, other, other areas of the magician is that magical piece, um, you know, valuing uh, those special rituals, those little magical moments. Um, being a little bit spiritual and intuitive is a very big part of being a magician as well. So examples of the magician would be MasterCard, um, uh, Smirnoff, and I'm going to go back to... Um, Disney because Disney has that combination of being the magician and also being the innocent. So the magician part is that magic that Disney creates that um, just sparks that that um, imagination that comes out and these all these magical animals and creatures and characters that come to life and whether it is a Disney movie or whether you're going to an actual um, you know, one of their Disney worlds or Disney lands. Um, it's just everything about it is absolutely magical. Hi, Margot. Good to see you. Great to have you on board. Um, we'll get to Margot's brand personality in a second. Um, so when we're, we're looking at these different personality types, it really is important to know exactly where you sit as to how you do things and not necessarily what you do. And hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the rebel. So your rebel is a little bit of your outlaw. They are rebellious. They are shaking up the status quo. They are doing things differently. They have seen that there are issues within their industry or a particular topic or um, rules and regulations that they feel need to be changed. And they are prepared to disrupt their industries and do things entirely differently. So um, rebels would have a very uh, frank way of communicating. They don't beat around the bush. They tell you things the way it is. And you know what? If that happens to shock you or upset you, well, so be it. You need to deal with it. Um, so uh, the rebel really is, uh, it's the kind of brand that is prepared to step on toes 
if they need to be. Now, they don't all have to be, um, you know, bad as far as rebels are concerned. I mean, Robin Hood uh, would be what we would consider a rebel because he was stealing from the rich to give to the poor, but he was still shaking up the status quo and doing things differently. So one of the other examples of um, the uh, rebel brand personality is Apple. So Apple sits under the rebel as well as under the creator because of the fact that they were essentially a computer company and they decided, you know what, we are going to shake up the status quo, we are going to do things entirely differently. And um, the whole computer industry threw their arms up in the air and was horrified that a computer company was now going to produce phones. And, um, and Apple turned around and said, well, watch us. We're going to do this because we can and we know that we can make a real difference in the world with that. So um, another amazing rebel brand personality would be Harley Davidson. It is the most tattooed logo in the entire world. And they literally turned around what was a failing business and they were able to, um, by, by repositioning Harley as a cruiser instead of a racing bike and being able to say, hang on, you know what? We have the ability to turn a 40-year-old accountant into someone who is feared when they are on the back of a Harley riding into town. Other than that, no one would fear an accountant, would they? So um, this is where they are able to really harness the personality traits of the rebel. All right, the next one is the ruler. And um, Margot, uh, has uh, her own personal brand, Margaret Anderson, if anyone wants to go and have a look. Um, she um, is the ruler brand personality, and that is take charge, in control, very efficient, productive, confident, uh, responsible, really good role model for people, uh, very much a leader in the industry. Um, can often be a very sophisticated brand as well. So people tend to look towards them. Um, and when we're looking at examples of the ruler, we would have to, one of the best examples for the ruler would be uh, Mercedes-Benz. Now, when you think about the language and tone used for a ruler, it's very in control. They won't go off on a tangent and talk really fast about stuff. Everything is thought through, it's precise, it's methodical. Everything that they say has credibility and credence to it. Um, you wouldn't find uh, a ruler waffling on about stuff, which sometimes I find myself doing. But a ruler is very much in control. And people usually tend to stop and listen to a ruler because they have that presence about them. So if you think about Mercedes, you know, when you listen to any of their adverts or, um, you know, watch their adverts online, it's usually a man with a deep baritone voice who is talking. And he's talking really slowly so that everything he says is going to sink in. Um, other examples would be Rolex and Microsoft would be another one. Um, even American Express would fit into that brand personality. All right, the next one we have is the seducer. Now, the seducer is all about indulgence, intimacy, connectedness, relationships, um, warmth, um, being very captivating. They are committed and pleasurable. So on the one side of the seducer, it, it can be very sexy and quite erotic. But on the other side of it, it's more about that connection and that relationship building and that, and that indulgence. So the language and tone that would be used is quite sultry. Um, it would be, um, you know, the language that would entice people to use their services. Um, or buy their products. So examples um, of the seducer would be um, Victoria's Secret is a fantastic example. Calvin Klein is another great example. Even Magnum Ice Cream, if you think about how they promote and market their ice cream, they have always got people biting into this delicious chocolate and you can hear the cracking of it. And it makes you want to 
go out and buy a Magnum ice cream because the indulgence of it and that desire to have that product becomes so strong. So they really tap into that side of it. All right, and then the very last uh, brand personality that we're going to look at is the sage. So the sage is your thinker, your philosopher, your expert and advisor. They are also very confident. They're in control. Um, they they're credible. They're wise. Um, they have that element of intelligence, um, and they're very professional as well. So you'd find a number of uh, larger corporate companies might fit into the SAGE. Um, uh, there is a tendency for people who do consulting to feel like they are the SAGE, but once again, that's what they do. It's not necessarily who they are. So if you're a consultant and you feel that you fit into this, it's probably because it's what you do, not necessarily how you do it. So have a little bit of think about that. Um, uh, businesses that would fall into this brand personality would be uh, Discovery Channel would be one of them. Um, CNN would be another one. They would probably be the most obvious one. And then I also mentioned Oprah before. So the way Oprah does all of her stuff. So that is all 12 of the brand personalities. I hope it's given you a little bit more insight into what they're all about and a couple of the examples. If you want to find out what your brand personality is, you can head to the website brandpersonalities.com.au and you can actually play the game yourself and find out what your personality is. Now, if you're building a personal brand, you need to go down the avenue for the brand personalities app for personal. But if you're building a business brand, and the questions are slightly different because if you're building a personal brand, it is all about you. So you need to then focus on yourself, your own attributes. But when you're looking at your business, it's quite different. Your business might have an entirely different brand personality to yourself. So you need to keep asking yourself that question, is this me or is this my brand personality? So give that a go. Um, if there is anybody who is interested in going to Nine to Thrive, which is in Sydney, uh, the 10th and the 11th of August, anybody that does brand personalities between now and the 5th of August will automatically go into the draw to win free tickets. And we've got five of those going. So if you're thinking of doing it, now is the time to do it because you could win yourself a ticket to go to this amazing expo. So um, on that note, I'm going to end off. And um, I look forward to hearing any of your feedback.